Hey, it's Drivoy here. We're back. It's been a while since I've done any of the Red Dragon Inn stuff. This time we're going to be taking a look at Red Dragon Inn 3. My wife and kids got a little more interested in playing the game. We've been playing a, a bit more often, so I decided to pick up another box set to add some more variety. Right now we only have the base game and then four, I think, of the single character add-ons. So this is going to add another four characters to us. For anybody who's not familiar with Red Dragon Inn, it's basically a mini-game on what happens after a Dungeons & Dragons adventure or some kind of dungeon crawl. When your party goes back to the bar and you have all your money and all your loot and you're basically drinking the night away. And the objective of the game is to be the last person who still has money remaining from their adventures as well as the last person who's sober. So if you run out of money, they throw you out of the inn and you're out of the game. If you get drunk and pass out, the inn takes half your money, the party members take the other half, and they toss you in a room for the night. And the objective is, again, to be the last person standing. The game plays better the more people you can get, which is another great thing about buying another box set, because now it adds another four players. And uh, each of these big box sets like this come with four additional characters. And there's also individual character packs where you can buy singles, and I think they have a couple double character packs now as well. The real nice thing is that these big box sets contain everything you need to play, so you don't have to buy every one of them. You can start with just this one. For our new characters in this, we have Wizgill the Tinkerer. She builds little inventions that either help or hinder things. They kind of go around. Similar to Wrench, she's one of my favorite characters, but... Uh, her mechanics slightly different. Then we have Brewmaster Frank. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but I'm going to mispronounce all of these, I'm sure. He's a troll alchemist. He kind of mixes uh, potions, and he can either use them for himself, or he can actually sell them to other players, which are kind of cool, and uh, gives him another source of income. But the potions all do various things, and there's chances of them exploding or, or failing on him as well. Next we have Kaylin the Renegade. She's a little pixie and her pet wolf. The wolf, uh, his moods change from turn to turn and he can either help you out with things or become a nuisance. He's kind of fun. And last we have Serena the Pious. Pious. I can never say that word. And uh, she's an orc, I believe. An orc paladin. And uh, that alone is hilarious, but... Uh, she has a new mechanic where she raises and lowers on this little meter, and depending on where she is on that meter, various things happen with her different cards. It's kind of similar to Pookie, if you're familiar with him. Anyway, we're going to open it up and uh, get right in. The first thing we have right off the bat is our Rules Flyer. This is actually a slightly updated version from the one that was in the original game. Contains a few new lines. Pretty much the game hasn't changed, but they, they clarified a few things. And they even make reference to a few clarifications that weren't on the older cards that are specifically spelled out on the newer cards. And they um, show a lot of examples and everything. Really good layout for learning the game. My first time I actually learned from reading the rules. And I've taught a lot of people since. It's a really easy game to pick up. And uh, not too much to... Uh, to it there. Next we have something kind of neat. Because these new characters are a little more complicated than the characters from the original game, like I said, they play more like the um, single add-on characters. Each one has their own specific mechanic that makes them different and unique. This one comes with a little flyout for each of the new characters, explaining how their new mechanics work. You also get these included in any of the single play, uh, character add-ons. If you pick those up, you're going to get one of these two that explains how that character works. So the next thing we have are our player boards. And I do like on these um, big box sets, you actually get the bigger boards that have the um, locations for your decks. The single player expansions come with a much smaller, more compact version. It only has the uh, alcohol and... Uh, health meter here and then it just has little markings to say put a deck here put a deck here put a deck here but they don't actually have the piles not a huge thing but I think these look nicer on the table they are super super glossy too 
but you get four more of those into our tray. These trays are kind of neat for each individual expansion, but once you start getting multiples, you're going to want to start combining them. There is a Red Dragon N5, which comes in a huge box that is basically like a storage bin. If you've ever seen the big cardboard bins that they store like baseball cards or magic cards in, and they got multiple rows and dividers, that lets you store every expansion that's been put out to date that I know of might not have the very new one that came out after that, the Villains one, but everything else can fit in there, and I think there's plenty of room to spare, so you should be able to fit even more in. But uh, for these, they work good for this expansion, and maybe if you get a couple extras, but then you start piling these little uh, slots up, and it makes it harder to get this stuff, but still a very nice setup for the base box itself. So each of the characters has their own deck, and that's how you're going to be playing them in the game. In the middle here we have our drink deck, which is full of all the various drinks that the bar is going to serve. And throughout the game you're going to be um, buying drinks for other players. Players are going to be giving you drinks. At the end of each round you're going to be drinking drinks that you have. And you gain an alcohol content equal to their uh, text down here. Some do. You can see a few of them have a lot of other things on there. There's dirty dishwater. You lose health, but you uh, don't gain any alcohol. And so on. There's also these event cards. And I love this one as a uh, monster attacks the bar. And uh, you lose one of your alcohol contents because it kind of sobers you up a little bit. And then if you decide to help, you're going to lose some fortitude because you're going to get beat up. But at the same time, the inn's going to pay you a little bit of gold. So things to keep in mind, there's lots of different ones like that. There's uh, drinks with Chaser, so you have to drink this drink and whatever drink comes up after it. And there's also, I think they're towards the back here, some drinking events. Round on the house, everybody takes a drink. There's a drinking contest where everybody takes a drink and whoever has the highest alcohol wins and everybody else has to pay them money. Kind of cool things like that. The nice thing about the drink decks is every one of the box sets like this comes with a new deck. There's also promo cards and things from events. And you can build up a huge drink deck with lots of variety in there so you don't always see the same ones coming up. Next thing up here we have is our coins. These are kind of an interesting thing. The base game uses these much larger coins. Which are cool. They, they, they have a great feel to them when you're playing the game because they're about the size of poker chips. So you're throwing them in the... They're just kind of neat to have stacks of them around. They feel much hardier than the uh, ones that come with the single player, uh, single character add-ons are like half the size of these. Which, while they're cool because you can fit more of them in the box, they just don't have the same feel to them. I know a lot of players kind of like to deluxe and pimp out their games too and end up replacing these with uh, metal coins. Which There's a couple different companies online now that make some really awesome metal coins you can use for pretty much any game. And then last, we have our tokens here. And you got the uh, red ones to use for your health and the clear ones to use for your alcohol content. And they're going to go on these boards. You start out with 20 health and 0 alcohol. Throughout the course of the game, your fortitude is going to go down. Your health is your fortitude. And your alcohol is going to go up. If those two ever end up on the same number or cross, you're out of the game. For the characters themselves, they are a bit different than the ones from the original game, if you're familiar with that. They're more akin to the ones from the expansions. And, uh, I can find, there's Rosacea. Most of the ones in this one, I think, come with two decks. I think Serena might be the only one who doesn't. But for Wizgill here, we have your basic deck. These are the cards you're going to be playing most of the game with and deciding uh, what you're going to do. The basics in here are all pretty much the same, the gambling ones and uh, things like that. You start getting into more unique ones, and her um, mechanic have these little gears at the top here. And they have them on the title where, say, that one doesn't. When you get a card like that, and these come into play, you're going to flip over the top card of her gear deck. And you have her gear deck here. And you're going to reveal the top card of these. And do whatever they say. 
So the card you, in this case, the card you played didn't work. And we're very sorry, and please don't cry. Hers are cute. They have these little sketch arts at the bottom, but they usually have, uh, let's see if I can find another one here. And here's one. Your card takes effect, but you subtract one from the effect, and you lose a fortitude. There's ones that do ores, I think. Most of them are ands and buts with her, because her inventions are kind of screwy. Some are really cool, though, but it's definitely a, a unique aspect that really gives your character some, some depth, and all of the ones in this expansion do that kind of thing. Frank is another one. He's our troll alchemist, and uh, he, he has the same similar type of mechanic in that... Uh, Let's see, the base cards here are the same, and then you're going to start getting into his more unique cards here. Some of them are great. I love the artwork on these. They really fit in with the theme. And they're comical as well. All of his uh, pretty much pertain to the fact that he is a troll, and he makes random potions that do random things. And uh, his, on the beginning of each of your turns... You're going to reveal one of his potions and uh, decide if you want to use this potion or the one that you currently have in effect. If you want to use it, you put it down in front of you and you can use this at any time. You can also sell these to other players. The suggested cost is down here, but you can barter as well if uh, somebody really wants it or things like that. So you can change that amount, but this suggested this one's worth a gold. Once you sell them, they go to the player who bought them, and when they use them, it'll go to your discard. If you choose to keep the next one, you can only ever have one in front of you at a time. So if you decide to keep, these are still in order, but uh, if you decide to keep the next one, then it's going to replace the one you have in front of you, and that's going to go to the discard pile. So it's always good to either use them or sell them before you uh, draw the next one. When the uh, pile runs out, you reshuffle them and go through it again. There's a lot of interesting things you can do in here. Healing, acid. Uh, there's ones that mess with the strength of drinks. There's ones that... Uh, yeah, these ones, when they come up, um, remove the potion that you already have in play regardless. So, lots of cool stuff in there. Again, they make him feel a bit more unique and uh, definitely get the feeling that you're an alchemist out of control mixing things. Next we have Kaylin. She's another one that has a uh, extra deck. Her extra deck's actually for her wolf, though. And again, all of her cards, pretty much the standard loadout. Most, like, half the deck is the same for every character. And then... Uh, you have a small section in there that are specific to each individual character. And the, the fluff text and things that go with them are, are hysterical. That's one of the best parts of the game is as you play these, um, reading off the text and uh, getting into your character. Now what makes her different is her pet wolf who has his own deck. And unlike most of the other guys, at the end of each of your turns, you're going to reveal... A new card from this deck and depending on the mood that Wolfric gets into is um, what's gonna happen and you're stuck with that for the entire turn until your next turn is over so it's kind of neat that it comes up at the end it's very unpredictable and uh, some of them are quite helpful some of them are um, are very detrimental There's the one that's extremely powerful in here, where he stalwart, and it basically negates, um, makes it so people can't negate uh, cards that you play, which is extremely powerful. There's only one of those in the whole deck, though, so you got to wait for it to come up. So it makes up for some of the detrimental ones that are in there. She's probably my second favorite character in this deck. i, I got to say, I love the Tinker. And then finally, we have Serena. And uh, she actually doesn't have a whole separate deck like other people. She just has this one card. 
you're going to count uh, start a counter on eight and as the game progresses this is going to go down or back up depending on the card you play depending on what number the um, token is on when you play certain cards they're going to have different effects and again one of the differences on her cards she still has the same half the deck or so that all the other people have but her cards have these arrows on the bottom down arrow up arrow and so on down two and depending on what you play you're gonna have to move that little counter based on those arrows and then you have cards like this which you can play um, whenever the normal requirements are up here and at the bottom depending on where your counter is if it's between eight and six this card's gonna be free to play there's um, if this one's up to eight you can't negate it and so on there's some that have yeah, varying varying aspects depending on uh, what you do and then you always have the X's here will tell you exactly what the X is and um, that can change depending on amount of gold you spend in this case the amount of uh, if you're playing on another person's drink or not there's one with a bunch of different options. So there's a lot of cool things in here. She's one of the more complicated characters to get the hang of because of the way that moves. It reminds me of uh, Pookie. It's very similar to some of his mechanics. And uh, the big thing with her cards is that you resolve the card that you play at whatever your current rating is. And then you apply, so in this case, you, yeah, you'd, you'd use whatever's there. Then you apply the, the aspect down here where it goes down or up. So that's something to keep in mind because it may change. If you play this card, somebody plays a nope card or whatever they are, the, the counters. And um, then you play a counter to their counter. Well, your counter card resolves, which may move your token. And then you work your way down the pile until it gets back to this card. So that number might not be at that amount when you, from when you played the card to when it actually triggers. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. And it's a interesting little side game that you have to play with her. Overall, though, I absolutely love Red Dragon Inn. It's a really simple, short, fast, fun game. It's easy to explain to people. They pick it up really quick. Usually after their first game, they're set and can play. The newer characters are a little bit more complicated, but at the same time, it makes them more fun because they're more unique. They're not just a handful of cards with different text making them different. They each have completely different mechanics, which make them feel different. If I had to make one complaint about Red Dragon Inn, it's that it is a player elimination game, especially in larger groups. People are going to get eliminated earlier on. There is some downtime if you're the first person knocked out. At the same time, the game relatively plays pretty quickly. Uh, as long as you're not having a gigantic group. We've played it before with like 20 players. And yeah, that kind of sucks when you get knocked out. But in a smaller group size, if you're playing with uh, anywhere between 2 to 6, 8 people, say. There's not going to be that much of a downtime thing. And uh, it's a really fun, just sit around, party, drinking game. That's what we use it for. And uh, there's a lot of back and forth, especially, like I said, you read the text off the cards and the fluff text. You really get into your character as you as you play those. And some of the, the quotes and things on them are just hysterical, especially if played at the right time. Definitely a, uh, a fun little game. I know I didn't go into mechanics too much, but, I mean, most people pretty much know how it plays by now. The game's been out for years and uh, I'm sure you can find a playthrough somewhere if you're really interested in that aspect. I just wanted to go over what was in the Red Dragon Inn 3 box. And I'll probably do videos for the other ones as I add them to my collection. There are a couple ones that add some different aspects to the game. I uh, can't remember the number off the top of my head. I think it's 4 that takes place on a pirate ship. And... Uh, introduces an event deck that takes place as things happen so you're not actually in the inn you're on a ship there's a new one that just recently came out called villains 
where you're actually playing as the um, bad guys. Um, they also have a mode where the players in the bar are taking on a boss that came in. I haven't actually played that one. I, I almost backed it, but I didn't. I'm trying to get out of backing as many Kickstarters, so I may pick that one up later on just to see. Anyway, if you're a fan of Red Dragon Inn, obviously you're going to want it. More characters are fun. There are some great characters in this one, too. So, uh, check it out. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for Red Dragon Inn 3. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.